Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down a huge storm that'll be impacting the United States throughout the week and as well as this weekend and this will bring multiple rounds of severe storms to the United States which begins tomorrow and will run all the way through Saturday. This will bring the risk for damaging winds, large hail and tornadoes. I'll give you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast but let's first Let's begin with what's happening across the United States right now and we'll first begin with the Northeast and there's some pretty crazy stuff happening up here in the Northeast United States you might be thinking this is like a hurricane or a tropical storm right no this is just an ordinary low pressure system that's actually been going up the coastline and it's been bringing multiple inches of rain to parts of the Northeast today and New England does not need more rain we've already seen a lot of rain in New England especially from Hurricane Lee when Lee passed by it brought a few inches of rain to parts of Maine there is more rain coming to Maine at throughout the afternoon and evening so unfortunately it just continues there to unravel there is a surplus of rain in the northeast United States it would be nice if they could share some of that rain here across much of the rest of the country because areas like the southern plains like Texas are in a pretty serious drought right now but that obviously is all moving off to the north and east this is a one-day event it will be out of here by tomorrow and over in the southern plains it's much drier We're really not looking at much right now but that will change tonight and tomorrow we are looking at a risk of severe weather it is a bit more of an elevated risk looking at a threat for some significant hail going into tomorrow we'll have more details on that here in just a couple minutes further up to the north in the midwest it's also dry up there but i would be monitoring the weather closely as we go later into this week because areas in the midwest and as well as the northern and central plains will be at a threat of severe weather as we get later into this week and as well as the weekend and i'll talk about more on that here in just a minute as well over the rocky mountains some showers some storms we've already seen our first snowfall of the year in parts of the rocky mountains so that's happening there but obviously right now it's mostly just rain and that will continue to move off to the east all right let's talk more about the weather pattern that's happening here across the united states there's a lot to talk about because we are going to have an increased risk of severe weather this week one of the higher risks of severe weather i'd say that we've had in quite a while we haven't really had an enhanced risk of severe weather across any part of the great plains of the midwest in several weeks now so i think that might be happening this week at some point and i'll show you why so as of right now the jet stream is really in an interesting spot right now uh, we have our low pressure system back up here in the northeast and that's really the only main activity that we have but as we go throughout the next several days notice down in the southern plains we actually have a strong area of upper level winds this will allow for a low end threat for severe weather both tomorrow and as well as wednesday could this go into thursday into friday maybe even into saturday it definitely could but there is some uncertainty past wednesday but that'll be an area to watch for as we do have stronger westerly flow in the upper levels once we go into wednesday and a thursday watch out on the west coast of the united states we get this big low pressure system that starts to form that's back over in the western tier of the united states you might be thinking this won't impact the great plains right actually it will it'll go over the rocky mountains and once this actually goes over the rocky mountains there's a couple of things that might happen with this one of which it goes a bit more off to the north that means that there will be more impacts in terms of severe weather to areas like the central plains and as well as the midwest if it takes more of a southerly direction let's just say it goes like maybe a little bit more due east that would bring a bit more of a severe weather threat to the southern plains i think the more likely scenario is that this would go more off here to the north and northeast going closer to areas like the midwest and that would bring more of an impact there but as we go into thursday and a friday notice the upper levels here this low pressure system becomes pretty intense very strong upper level winds you'll notice those red colors that's indicating strong upper level winds and the reason why these strong upper level winds are such a big deal is because we haven't really seen it in quite a while and especially with this kind of trough that's going to be developing going later into this week that is definitely concerning for a severe severe weather setup it's going right over the rocky mountains and that can cause a lot more shear that can lead to more severe weather so that's the big concern as we go later into this week by late friday night to saturday this low pressure system does eject into the central plains there will be some strong upper level winds across areas like nebraska and kansas and i do think that the better chance for severe weather will probably be in this region here as we go into friday saturday this will likely shift to the east but i do want to point out that there is still some uncertainty of where this goes now notice as we go into late saturday Day, the trough starts to weaken in the upper levels that might be an indicator that we might not see a significant severe weather outbreak per se going into late saturday into sunday for those in the midwest but we'll have to watch this closely there's a lot of things to watch over the next several days with this one of the other things we have to look at is the low level jet though this is what helps to indicate rotation in the lower levels that basically means that whether we will see tornadoes or not so that's a big thing with the low level jet notice thursday into friday we're not really going to see a whole lot of that across the southern or central plains anytime this week the 
better chance of any tornado risk would come out of this organized trough and that probably wouldn't happen until either friday or saturday so those would be the two days to watch out for for a tornado risk this area in particular that i've circled is where those higher values are on this low level jet so that would indicate a southwesterly flow that's usually the worst case scenario when it comes to a tornado threat but the overall values here of the winds are not super high so i think the tornado risk right now is gonna be on the low to medium side but again multiple days out things will definitely change going into late saturday into sunday notice again we do have a low level jet still cranking over in the midwest so we'll have to watch this closely as it goes off to the east again there's some uncertainty whether this will go off closer to the like midwest for example or perhaps go closer to like you know, kentucky or tennessee so again there's some uncertainty here where this will exactly go but really over the next few days we're gonna get more certainty so stay tuned we'll keep posted with the latest make sure you subscribe down below uh, another thing to point out is the moisture there's gonna be a lot of humidity starting to rise out of the gulf of mexico we're gonna get that strong southerly pole as we go throughout the week and with the negatively tilted trough this usually pulls a lot more moisture out of the gulf of mexico notice the dew points on wednesday they're in the 60s all the way even into minnesota but we don't have really any initiators for severe weather meaning there's not really a cold front or dry line um the only place that there might be one would be the southern plains perhaps the central plains going to thursday and friday and saturday that's when we start to see a more defined area a more sharp divide of those dew points and we're going to see much more humidity that's going to be from texas all the way back into areas like north dakota and really the main area that i'd be watching for again would be in here for friday and then going into saturday we'd probably be watching for something more closer to the midwest but even then things are still uncertain this going into saturday night into sunday morning those dew points are a little bit higher there in parts of iowa illinois and wisconsin so those areas might be under the gun as we go into late saturday and eventually into sunday now the instability is essentially like putting gasoline into a vehicle but in this sense it's fueling severe storms and notice as we go into wednesday into thursday there's a lot of instability available in the southern plains so that'll allow again for a couple rounds of severe storms for those in texas and oklahoma and again we'll talk about that here in just a minute further off to the north and parts of the central plains we're still talking about a pretty decent amount of instability going into thursday night but again there are no initiators that means we're really not going to see a whole lot of severe weather out of that going into late friday and a saturday notice those instability values really get up there once we start to actually have initiators like a dry line or a cold front that'll allow for some severe weather and even going into late saturday there will be enough instability back over here in parts of like iowa or as well as missouri to allow for at least some severe weather late saturday into sunday now again what will we see exactly it's still to be determined but i would expect more of a damaging wind threat with maybe a couple tornadoes and in parts of the central and southern plains for that friday event i think we're looking at more damaging winds hail maybe a few tornadoes but i do think all modes of severe weather would occur on uh, friday if we end up seeing the setup that is currently being indicated by the computer models here's a look at the future radar for the next several days so again multiple rounds of storms in the southern plains that'll allow for at least some severe weather but maybe another round going to thursday night that would be primarily damaging winds maybe even all, all up and down the great plains but again that should be more of a widely scattered sort of severe weather event going to friday this could be a bit more of a scattered to numerous severe weather events so we'll have to watch for damaging winds and hail still some uncertainty of where these storms fire up and whatnot but right now the european model is indicating maybe closer to nebraska and iowa and perhaps near missouri but the better chance of that happening would likely be down here on the eastern side of this trough but i don't know if we're really going to see that there's a lot of different you know little things to look at like the cap and all that sort of stuff so i'll we'll have to watch this closely going into late saturday into sunday better chance of widespread showers and storms some of these being severe as well with damaging winds perhaps some large hail and maybe a few tornadoes as well across this area from the midwest all the way back through the southern plains but again where will the greatest chance of severe weather be it's a very broad outlook right now we don't have any really specific details yet because things will definitely change even some things that are large scale going to sunday this trough moves off to the north it starts to fizzle out and then eventually going into next week things get uncertain but it doesn't look like the severe weather event will go all the way to the northeast all right let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next couple of days going Going into tossing trampolines on tacos tuesday we do currently have a slight risk of severe weather from oklahoma all the way back through the dfw metroplex main concern right now is large to very large hail we could see some hailstones up to baseball size so make sure you're protecting your vehicle tomorrow that includes anywhere in this hatched area oklahoma city is included in that dfw not right now included in that but i would still take the proper precautions because that is subject to change going into wacky weather wednesday we have a marginal threat of severe weather same area pretty much kansas also so western arkansas back into north texas oklahoma is also included in that threat now going into tomorrow it's a bit of an interesting setup right now we're looking at dew points in the upper 50s and low 60s which isn't going to create a whole lot of buoyancy here but there is going to be something to watch for right along this area here we have to watch and see if these dew points get about three to four degrees higher because if they do we might see a bit
bit more of significant severe weather really start to evolve and that's why there's a bit more of that hatched slight risk of severe weather now notice as we go into tonight again there'll be some showers and storms into tomorrow morning this is around, around lunchtime really not looking at a whole lot by lunchtime this is by around five six o'clock we're gonna have to start watching storms firing up in this area here these will be more discreet these ones would have a better chance of large hail and damaging wind gusts so this area will be really watching closely for tomorrow afternoon because these will produce a better chance for severe weather there will be a cluster or two of storms back up in oklahoma and kansas that could also produce some damaging winds won't be nearly as much of a hail threat and then notice as we go closer to the late evening and overnight hours there will be some showers and storms out there some clusters and these will be primarily damaging winds again there will be some heavy rainfall maybe some large hail still with those and again the maximum hailstone size that's being forecasted as of right now for tomorrow is baseball sized hail so make sure you're prepared for that keep posted with the latest make sure you subscribe to the channel there's a low chance i go live for this so make sure you stay tuned subscribe and hit the like button down below have a great day